Ever wonder how we choose our video topics? Well, it's all thanks to you, our amazing viewers and followers on this channel, on Instagram and Patreon. When we ask what you want to see next, the answer was site modeling. But here's the thing, site modeling is a vast ocean with so much to explore. That's why we are thrilled to introduce a special playlist dedicated to this topic. Welcome to our first video in this series and today we are explaining how to create terrain in 4 different ways. The building or house itself for which we are making the terrain is not the subject of this video. We will use the some simple geometric object purely to show the whole picture. Method 1 this is perhaps one of the first ideas that come to your mind when you need to make a terrain. You only need to make a cross section of the terrain using 2D lines or splines. Take into account that lines must be connected and they are in closed shape. After that we go to conversion mode, choosing 2D to 3D lines, 3D curves, select yes and select the entire shape. Now that everything has become one element and it's visible in 3D, we can go to Modeling tab, then 3D Surface, select the option 3D Surface from existing 3D lines and select our 3D shape. When the surface is created, we need to rotate it, of course, freely in 3D. Draw the axis of rotation, enter the angle and now create our terrain using the Extrude tool. Furthermore, we can rotate this field and adjust it to the desired position, so that it fits our house. However, a field that is created is actually a 3D object and we can further shape it accordingly to our wishes. Let's model additional surface and then use the slice tool to slice terrain into layers. First, we select the 3D object, then click on the surface with which we are cutting. Repeat it once more and delete the surface. Now all that's left is to add material to our layers into order to distinguish them easier. For the first layer we will put grass, the second layer will be gravel and the third can be soil. Our terrain is done and if it's too steep and not large enough then we can use resize tool. Increase our terrain by a value of 5 in the x and y direction while we will leave the value 1 for the z-axis. Now our terrain may look more realistic, but we will still change the grass material. If you want to do excavations, there is a separate toolset for them, available under the AIC license only from version 2024. We will cover them in detail in one of the next videos. For now, the simpler way is to create a 3D object, the size of our house. We will expand it a little so that we can see it more easily. Now, with the help of boolean operations, we will first select the terrain and then the object we want to remove. Right click to confirm and if you move the house, you can see that the terrain is ducked out. Method 2 if you watched the previous video where we made a wavy roof, then this tip will look very familiar to you. In fact, in the same way we will make a wavy terrain. We use two 3D splines in two directions. Then rotate freely in 3D so they can touch at one point. Use the extrude along the path tool and when the surface is created, right click on it, choose the 3D surface to reference surface. Name it Terrain, confirm with Enter and delete the lines. Using the Slab tool we will create our terrain layers. It is important to attach our plate to new plane and enter a constant distance, for example 0.3 meters. For now choose the material and make the terrain. For the next layer change the heights and make a layer with a thickness of 1 meter change material and model a new layer with the same dimensions as previous one. Now to position your house in place, you can make a vertical section and adjust your object to desired heights. Considering that our house goes through the layer of the terrain, we will create thicker last layer by changing the heights from 1 meter to 5 meters. If we want to create excavations, we should first convert the terrain into a 3D object 
and then, as the previous method, use boolean operations. However, this time we can use another approach. We can start the tool Recess opening its lab, select first layer, select the opening option and create the shape of our house. If we move the house, you can see that the first layer has been removed. Now use the same tool to excavate the next layer, but before that we will need a lower excavation point. Copy it, run the tool, now select the second layer, in the settings select recess and for the bottom level paste the value. For the value above, it's just important to exceed the surface of the field. Once again, select the shape of our house and click escape. If we now move the house, we will see that our excavation has been successfully created in this way as well. So you can choose what suits you best. What you need to know is that using this method the terrain in the Happy New Year video was created and we will use the same terrain in the next video in this series, where we will explain how to make construction sites. Method 3 Open the surroundings role, then on the terrain tab select the terrain point tool, click on the point symbol and choose the shape of the point that suits you as well as its size. Turn on the constant size in layout option and see how it will be displayed. Press OK and then in the text section turn on special text and enter the position of the text as well as its distance. Now if we click somewhere on the screen we can see how our point looks like. The settings are saved automatically and we can delete our point. Let's check representation and turn on all options so that all elements are visible. We can now load the file containing the terrain points. First we select the type of the file we want to import, in this case it is coordinates. Then choose the correct file extension. These files are most often extracted from device used for surveilling the terrain, such as total station, GPS or similar. We will select RE1 because we have that file on our computer. Choose whether is import or export, in this case obviously import and other settings are not of major importance at the moment. Click on apply and all that's left is to find and select the RE1 file. When we have imported all points, select them all in order to see them better. You can run Mesh Optimize Grid tool, select New option and select all the points. When we reduce the brightness, you can better see the topography of our terrain. Also, there is an option for the contour line. Just select Digital Terrain Model, Alplan automatically show us the minimum and maximum point of the terrain and ask us for the height of difference for the contour line. I will enter value of 1 meter and in the 3D viewport you can see how it looks. There is also a tool for converting DTM element to 3D. If we run it, Alplan asks us on which drawing file we want to save it. And I will choose the number 30 because it's currently empty. Since we are still in command, if you try to click on digital terrain model again, you can see that drawing file 30 is already occupied and has a new name. Let's go to escape a couple of times and open drawing file 30. This is now a regular surface that we can convert to a plane, name it a terrain and model the slab in the same way we did in the method 2. You can also adjust the other settings as you wish. But this time it doesn't matter, because we will convert into 3D object. If the slab is too thin, we can still modify it with the help of heights. And after that, go to the conversion mode tool, select architecture, UD elements to 3D solids, then carefully select only our slab and after the conversion is done, delete the plane because we don't need it anymore. The further procedure is now the same as we did in method 1. You can create 3D bodies and subtract one from the other. Method 4 This tool has been enabled only since version 2024 and is located at the Teamwork tab. The tool is called GIS Connector and it's actually very simple. 
all we need is to select the size of the terrain we want to import. As you can see, the size of the terrain is directly related to the price. But we also have a free option, as long we stay in the boundaries that are smaller than 0.1 square kilometer. If you need, you can also check the other settings. And what is important to me is to turn on the option Move Reference Point to the global 0.0. .0. There are also options for loading points, surface and DTM. In this case, I choose a surface. When we are done with the settings, click on Generate Preview. The loaded terrain will be displayed and we can do the import. As we already had an existing object in this driving file, and that is our small house, it may happen that our terrain and house are at a great distance. You just need to find them and bring them closer. Also, if your terrain is shown as a set of triangles, then in the animation options you can turn on or off the edge option, so it looks smooth. With this terrain, you can continue to do the same things that we did in previous methods. Also, in the same way, we can import the urban part of the city and see how our building fit into the surroundings. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Thank you for watching once again and follow our YouTube channel for more interesting videos.